Now, ladies and gentlemen, may we have the honor to invite the Honorable Mr. Paul Chan, Financial Secretary of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, to deliver a keynote speech. Please welcome. Stephen, Stephen, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great pleasure to welcome you all in person and online to Investment Promotion Week, organized in celebration of the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Hong Kong SAR. I'm told that some 2,500 businesses and investment leaders from 45 economies will take part in this Investment Week. For that, my sincere thanks to Invest Hong Kong. As the Chief Executive noted, the theme of this Investment Promotion Week is Hong Kong Success Story, your next chapter. Each day this week, we will focus a salient sector or feature of Hong Kong's long-standing international success story. We will, all, we will also highlight what is fast emerging or just around the bend waiting for you for your business and investment future in Hong Kong. Speaking of Hong Kong, the recent issue of a well-known international business magazine included this questioning and questionable heading. Which city will be the next Hong Kong? The article suggests that there were contenders for Hong Kong's preeminent status Despite, and I quote, decades as Asia's de facto financial capital, thanks to a currency that is pacted to the US dollar, income tax that tops out at just 17%, a robust stock exchange, and proximity to mainland China, the world's second largest economy. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one Hong Kong, and it is not going anywhere. You can count on that. Yes, we have had a bum ride the last few years, but our social unrest has given way to stability and business opportunity. As for the pandemic, along with a more robust COVID situation, we have been rationalizing our anti-epidemic measures and easing quarantine and travel arrangements on a science and evidence-based and targeted approach. The goal is to reduce the inconveniences of cross-boundary travel and allow us to revive the economy and return to normality as early as possible. The, tax the relaxation of quarantine arrangements for arrivals to COP3 recently is another important step in this direction. I can also tell you, looking from the more fundamental perspectives, why Hong Kong will continue to be successful. We can thank our singular one country, two system principle. It ensures a clear and compelling connection with both the mainland and the world at large. And we have the assurance of the central government. Speaking on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Hong Kong SAR, President Xi Jinping assured the world that the one country, two systems principle will be adhered to in the long run. He also emphasizes the importance of maintaining Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages, and the central government's full support to strengthen Hong Kong's position as an international financial, shipping, and trading center. Our status and advantages are underpinned by the rule of law, independent judiciary, fearful of information, capital, and free trade. We are also blessed with world-class infrastructure, a welcoming business environment open to all, 
a simple and competitive tax regime, a freely convertible currency with no capital controls, an internationally aligned regulatory regime, excellent education institutions recognized by the world, and a vibrant city living, and a whole lot more that make Hong Kong the fierce economy of the world. Our connectivity and deepening economic integration with the mainland, particularly with the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, will only present us and those working with us with more far-reaching prospects and opportunities. The GBA is a young, energetic, custard city development with prosperous developments in innovation and technology, as well as manufacturing. It boasts a combined population of 86 million and a per capita GDP of more than 22,000 US dollar. We are stepping to strengthen cooperation with sister cities in the GBA on financial services and innovation and technology and indeed many other areas. Certainly, it is a huge consumer market. It is also a rich source of talents, technology, capital, as well as production and service solutions that could help businesses to thrive. So despite the difficulties we encounter during the COVID-19 pandemic, be they loss of talents or challenges to our competitive status, no city, no financial center in the world can equip our wanted strengths and celebrated advantages. Indeed, Hong Kong is coming back, readying for the world's return and for your return. In just two days, the chief executive will deliver his first policy address. Stay tuned. There will be highly favorable terms and measures to attract both enterprises and talents. And in two weeks time, Hong Kong will host a global financial summit. A host of cultural and sports events are also returning. They include the Hong Kong Masters, a world-class snooker tournament which was successfully concluded. The return of the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra later this month and the Rugby Summit, we call it Hong Kong Sevens. Remember to get your tickets while stock lasts. Turning to the theme of this day on financial services, business and professional services, as well as FinTech, there is indeed much to highlight. Long one of the world's leading international financial centers, Hong Kong is home to nearly 80 of the top 100 World Banks and 12 of the top 20 insurance companies. Our banking sector remains resilient with robust capital and liquidity positions our stock market too is deep and liquid. Despite the great uncertainties dominating international affairs, strengthening trade and businesses, Hong Kong's financial market has remained enviably stable and sure. We are acting relentlessly to reinforce our position as an international financial center backed strongly by our country under the 14 five-year plan. This includes fortifying our traditional advantages and opening up new frontiers. Over the past few years, we have been working to diversify our fundraising platforms through reforming our listing regimes, offering incentives and concessions for certain securities to be leased, etc. At the same time, with the quick support of our country, 
the various connect schemes are expanding and deepening, with mutual assets helping to further connect the mainland's financial markets and international capital, and vice versa, facilitating the reform and opening up of our country's financial services. The, the world's demand for RMB for cross-boundary trade settlements, investment, and as a reserve currency is growing. Hong Kong, as the offshore RMB business, business hub, which handles more than 75% of global offshore RMB payments, is working to enhance our RMB offshore ecosystem and facilitate RMB's internationalization. We seek to roll out more investment and investment and other instruments denominated in RMB to provide a wide range of investment, exchange risk management, and treasury management tools. We are also upscaling our related market infrastructure. At the same time, we are striving to strengthen our status as an international asset management center, risk management center, and green and sustainable finance center for various policy incentives. Fintechs and virtual assets are also trends that we eagerly embrace. Altogether, they present boundless long-term opportunities for Hong Kong's financial services and investors everywhere. In particular, guided by our environmental commitments and to contribute to worldwide efforts to cut carbon emissions, green and sustainable finance in Hong Kong is shining. It offers quick promise for those government and enterprises alike who are seeking to fill their green transition full harnessing international capital. Last year, the total amount of green and sustainable bonds and loans issued or arranged in Hong Kong was four times of that in 2020, reaching 56.6 billion US dollar and put us the first in Asia. Since 2018, the Hong Kong SA government has issued a cumulative total of close to 10 billion US dollar worth of green bonds, which are denominated in renminbi, US euro and Hong Kong dollar. And among them, some US dollar and euro denominated green bonds have a tenure of as long as 20 to 30 years, which were the longest, which were the longest tenure of government bonds of the same type in Asia at the time of issuance. In May this year, we issued Hong Kong's inaugural retail green bond it totaled about 2.6 billion US dollar, making it the world's largest retail green bond issuance. Thanks to that issuances, residents can, con can contribute directly to Hong Kong's greening and our continuing progress in sustainable finance. In many ways, we are setting the benchmark for green and sustainable finance in the region. There is opportunity too in carbon trading. In July, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange launched Hong Kong International Carbon Market Council. Its membership include Hong Kong mainland and international corporations, as well as financial institutions. Hong Kong has a leading role in the asset and wealth management industry in this region. As at the end of last year, asset under management in Hong Kong among to over 4.5 trillion, with two thirds of the funding 
source from non-Hong Kong investors. Hong Kong is also Asia's largest hedge fund center and the second largest private equity market. The latter, we are second only to China. I mean, only to the mainland. Now, family office is a new growth point. To boost our attractiveness as a family office hub, tax concessions are already in the pipeline. Our organizer, Invest Hong Kong, has indeed set up a dedicated family office team about a year ago. Then there is FinTech. This government attaches great importance to FinTech development and the digitalization of financial services. That includes enhancing our financial infrastructure, nurturing talents, strengthening collaboration with the mainland and overseas jurisdictions, and ensuring an enabling regulatory environment. We have been hearing, we have seen heartening development just five years ago. Hong Kong count only about 180 fintech enterprises. Today, we are home to more than 600 fintech companies with about one third from overseas. That includes eight virtual banks and four virtual insurance companies. Our fintech infrastructure is quickly expanding. The popularity of faster payment system and electronic payment platforms is fast rising. By September this year, the number of FPS registration was more than 11 million, having increased by 22% compared to a year ago. And with the help of the consumption voucher scheme, we launched the, the, numbers, of, the numbers of consumer and merchant accounts in electronic payment platforms had increased by more than 8 million and 100 50,000, respectively. And the Hong Kong MA has rolled out a FinTech 2025 strategy. Among many other things, it includes building a commercial data interchange, a piece of financial infrastructure that will enable more efficient financial intermediation. It will facilitate small to medium-sized enterprises to gain access to more convenient financing services being conducive to our financial inclusion goal. Hong Kong MA is also future-proofing central bank digital currencies, CBDC. In particular, Hong Kong MA is working with the Bank of International Settlements, Hong Kong Center, and three peer central banks on a project called Ambridge to explore the use of central bank digital currencies to expedite cost boundary payments. Our advances also include blockchain virtual assets, which are thriving in the global market. We see promise in securities token offerings in how blockchain technology can combine with traditional securities markets to support asset liquidity and wider financing channels, all in a transparent, efficient, and cost-effective manner. The Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission is reviewing its policy in this regard and welcome business proposals. For virtual assets, a statutory licensing regime for VA services providers will be established after our Legislative Council passes the relevant bill. Thus safeguarding as well as promoting the healthy development of the sector. What is more, we are also studying the regulation of payment-related stablecoins and working to provide additional financial institutions with guidelines on offering VA-related services to clients. 
And do look forward to more exciting developments in our FinTech week to be held from October 31st to November the 4th, where we will make a policy statement on VAs. It will showcase our commitment on financial innovation towards developing a vibrant sector and ecosystem for VAs in Hong Kong. We are ready to tap the vast opportunities bought by WebFi, NFT, and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, there is so much to expect from Hong Kong, which is an ideal location for setting up or expanding your businesses. Our position is underpinned by our systematic strengths and a range of sectorial advantages, but all the more so our commitment to embrace innovation, trends, and opportunities by rolling out related enabling policies and measures. On this day and other days of the Investment Promotion Week, I'm sure you will hear a great deal more. I know you will enjoy every moment of this Investment Promotion Week, Hong Kong's success story. After all, it is your next chapter, your next future. I wish you all the best of business and health, as well as investment in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Honorable Mr. Chan. Thank you. Please be seated. We definitely look forward to celebrating the success of Hong Kong together.